Hey folks, Ray at DCAmerica.com here. Today I've got a bit of a new feature you've probably never heard of, and it's called Extended Display Mode. And it's on Garmin's watches and their head units, uh, both of them depending on which version you have, and we'll get to that in just a second. And I tried it out for the first time this past week in a triathlon, and it's pretty interesting. In reality, they probably should just simply call it like triathlon display mode, because that's really the only scenario it's gonna be used for. I guess duathlon, but no one really counts duathlon. I mean, I mean, nothing wrong with athletes, but basically what it does, it takes your watch, and I'll talk about all the models of supports, and mirrors it to your bike computer down there on your handlebars. Uh, the idea being that you can go ahead and have your entire uh, triathlon time inclusive of your swim and first transition on your bike display. Sounds pretty interesting, right? Uh, so the first thing you need is a compatible watch, and I'll put the list right now on this side. And the second thing you need is a compatible bike unit, and I'll put the list of those on that side there. Uh, now this feature's actually been around for like almost two years in various firmware versions on different watches and devices. Uh, but it really isn't the last couple months that Garmin's like started to get a bit more public about it. By public, I mean still not mentioning it, but it's there in case you happen to dig around and look for it. Uh, so setting up is super easy. Uh, right now, I've actually got it running on the Mark Series watch, but I'll show you that in a second what that looks like. We're gonna start from scratch here on the 945. Again, all the compatible watches up there, they all are pretty much identical when it comes to setting things up. So, okay, here we are on the watch itself. You're basically gonna go into the sensors menu on the watch. So we'll go on down here until we find sensors. On the 935, you gotta go to settings and then sensors, but same, same. Click on add new, and we'll go down until we find the remote display option there. Extend display, sorry, that's what they call it now. So extend display. Over here on your edge device, you're gonna tap that hamburger button. Depending on what your edge device is, it might be slightly different. And then you're gonna go down to extended display mode, tap that thing there, and that's gonna basically be waiting for this watch. So over here, we say, yep, go ahead and search for it. And the two will basically talk. They're gonna go and pair up the exact same way that you effectively pair like a power meter or a heart rate strap or a cadence sensor or any other sensor that you have in the edge. It pairs it up here. So you see display. Confirm to add that there, and then it'll go ahead and it'll reconnect up, and you'll see things over there. The entire process, maybe it'll take you 20, 30 seconds all in. It's not too difficult. Oh wait, before we get too far into this, if you're finding this interesting, go ahead and like that like button right now at the bottom there. It does help out the channel quite a bit. And there we go. Now it's all connected up, and at the top there we see a multi-sport time. We haven't started an activity yet. We see lap time, distance, timer, pace, and so on. On this side here, we see that it's connected. If we go and tap this open, we can see the connected status, about, name, remove, nothing special there. That's all pretty much it is what it is. Not much you can do there. Over here, we'll go ahead and start an activity. So we'll just go right into that and we'll go down into triathlon. There we go. And we'll start the swim leg. You'll see that it immediately started over here, our multi-sport time up the top and the lap time. When it says lap time here, it does mean lap time, but it also means basically your time for your sport. In this case, the time right now is the lap time for the sport. So if I go ahead and go to the next sport, so transition one, you'll see that'll go ahead and it'll show my last lap leg right there, so 15 seconds. And the current lap right now for transition is eight seconds. You can see these two match right there, uh, you know, within a second or so, which is fine. And then we'll go hit it one more time. And now we're into our bike mode. Uh, so you can see bike over here, it's coming up right now. There we go. And we have lap time there, distance, timer, speed, and so on. Now this right now is our lap time for the bike. Uh, and if we swipe through these screens here, we see the exact same screens that I had configured up on my 945. So again, heart rate will be the next one down here, and so on. Uh, so back to the, the time page doesn't show. Total time is already shown up here at the top, so let me show that again and back to distance right there. Now to give this a little bit different perspective, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the Mark watch and the pairing right now the data, what it looks like. And the reason is I've been riding around for about three hours now. Uh, so I've got a bit more data and it makes it a little more clear between the two. So what you can see here is my total time right there is three hours, one minute and 32 seconds up at the top right there. If I go down here, I'm gonna unlock the screen again. There we go. Uh, you'll see my 200 hours and 50 minutes is my bike time. You'll notice that's different than lap time. And the reason for that is that in this case, lap time is legitimately laps. So I happen to have a five mile auto lap on the mark here, which means that this will automatically iterate every five miles to new lap. So I'd recommend turning off auto lap on your bike uh, if you wanna see just the bike segment on the edge device itself. If we go through here though, you can see the distance 10.6 miles right there. Uh, speed is zero on both, of course. And I've got this, this mark set up to automatically lock so I don't accidentally go to the next sport in triathlon mode. Uh, and you can see if we go down here, heart rate, 72 beats per minute. And you'll notice these data pages are, again, the exact same. So we should be able to find that heart rate one right there, heart rate, and heart rate zone is actually what showed around the edge right here. So that's why you see that there. It's automatically locking again. And then 
heading is in here too, so probably part of this compass one right there because they can't show the map for whatever reason. Uh, and then total time and so on. Uh, again, these two top display fields stay the same every time. So multi-sport time and lap time, you can't change these. Like I can't hold down this button right here and change this. This just stays, is what it is. Uh, and so you're only gonna get these bottom four fields here, up to four fields, depending on what your 4Runner is configured for. So the way this works, logistically speaking for you at a triathlon, is that in the morning when you go to transition area, you get your bike all set up, go ahead and turn on your edge device and just go straight into extended display mode. I would double check that your watch connects to it automatically. It should do that, but just make sure it does that before you leave the, the area. And then just leave it. Leave it in extended display mode, leave it on, it's fine. Uh, all of Garmin's edges will last the entire duration of a iron distance triathlon, so that's not really an issue, at least up until the end of the bike course anyways for you. Uh, and it'll actually stay there. It won't go to sleep or anything like that. And what I found in my triathlon is by the time I got to my bike, it was already showing it there because Amp Plus, the signal range of that is like past those geese down there. It's, it's way the heck down there. See the geese? Yep, why the geese cross the road? I don't know, who knows? Um, but it's down there, uh, and so by the time you get to your unit, by the time you put your uh, helmet on and all that jazz, it's already well connected up and good to go. And then when you go ahead and finish up the bike leg, all you do is just simply leave your bike there like you normally would. Uh, there's no like stopping the head unit or anything like that. You just leave it, chill, and go on and have fun suffering on the run. Uh, let's talk about kind of the two other caveats. Uh, first is the fact that you're, you're losing a lot of the real estate on the edge device. So the fact is you can only get those four data fields plus the two that are the top there that you can't configure. So that's kind of a bit of a bummer. Uh, the lap time there isn't really sport time, which I think is what you probably would want. I think I really wanted to see my bike split up there because that's the sport I'm in, as opposed to seeing the lap time per se, because I may still want to have other laps and other ways to segment my bike course up. Uh, so I would like to see that change. Uh, the other downside too is that you're not going to get any of the advanced metrics on the edge device. So for example, Climb Pro, if you're using that on an Ironman course or anything like that, you're not going to see that because the edge actually isn't running, which gets to sort of the last gotcha. It isn't like recording a file unto itself. In this case, it's simply displaying what my watch is displaying. Uh, and so for me personally, I always viewed my edge device and triathlon is like that backup in case something goes wrong here. And in this particular configuration, there is no backup because this is just simply replicating what it's seeing onto the edge device. So there is a bit of a downside there. Still, the upside, of course, is that you do see your total time. And so if that's important to you, then that's certainly a big benefit there. Anyways, it's kind of an interesting thing. It's something that no one else has out there. Uh, it's something that I think there could be some little tweaks to that would make it a little more useful, but it's a good first attempt at stuff. Anyways, if you found this interesting, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button, whatever floats your boat, even the ding dong bell if you want to. Uh, we got more sports technology goodness on the way. Have a good one. I've got to say, while there's a lot of things I don't really like about the DJI Osmo Action, the one thing I really like is the framing. The fact that I've got the screen on the front here that I can see right now and I can frame stuff, my head, the geese right about there, I think. It's kind of handy. Just my two cents.